Hey folks, today I had an opportunity to have an interview with a gentleman named Jason Scott. He's the publisher of a couple online magazines, one called Yapa Tree and the other one called Ecuador Expats. I'm going to put links to his websites in the description. We had a very interesting interview today and I'm going to share it with you as soon as I come back. Hey! Hello there. So I received a call a couple weeks ago, or actually I received a message from Jason Scott of yapatree.com, uh, expatsecuador.com, and he asked me if I would be interested in having a talk with him, and talk about life in Ecuador. I told him I'd be happy to. He's a good friend, uh, a mutual friend of, my, of ours, uh, Captain Joseph, Joseph Candy, who's up in Cuenca. Joseph told him that he should get in touch with me and we would talk. He came by here and he interviewed me for this magazine and then I interviewed him for this channel. The following what follows is the interview that we had. I think it went really well and I want to encourage you to please check out his magazines. They're both online. There's a ton of useful information that everybody will benefit from. So here it is. Okay, I'm here with Jason Scott. What are your magazines, your websites, that, what do you call them? They're, <laughs> So, well, we have a couple so of you get it right and I, get, I don't get it wrong. <laughs> so we have two publications. Yeah. Uh, one is yapatree.com mm -hmm. and that's more focused on Cuenca. Mm -hmm. And so information that yep. you need about living and moving to Cuenca. Um, but we also have a few different services with that. So we sell property, so selling and, and renting property. Uh, we also have a discount card program. So we work with 40 or 50 different businesses in Cuenca mm -hmm. and offer little deals. And that's why it's called Yapa Tree. So okay. Yapa in Quichua is Yapa. That means something free or like a little bonus that oh. you're going to get. I was going to ask you what that meant. Yeah. See, so we actually changed the name. It was called Gringo Tree before, but okay. we wanted something that resonated a little bit more and, and kind of crossed some boundaries a little bit too. Right. So we don't just serve gringos. We also serve locals and give them information okay. too. And the other publication we have is Expats Ecuador, um, and that does a similar purpose, but it's more about choosing Ecuador as a nation as opposed to information relevant to just Cuenca. Yeah, and both of these are online. They're both online. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to put links in the description to both of them, obviously. Perfect. And, uh, so and this, this, um, this interview, this video, I'm going to embed it in okay. one of the articles as well because Good. we've just done a, a piece on Manta versus Cuenca sure. and talking about some of the differences. Right, right. And that's what we've been talking about here. Uh, and we're going to go into some of that now. I know we may not cover every bit of this because we, we'll get it in the interview as well. And that'll be in your publication, but we'll get as much of this as we can. Great. So... The, one of the first things that we talked about, we talked about altitude, and of course that's re in reference to living in Cuenca. Yeah. And I told you about the story about that I had. I, I think my biggest problem with the altitude is that I didn't give her enough time. Mm -hmm. you know. And I think that some people, and we covered this when we were talking earlier about, I think some people get a little hasty in their decision to leave Cuenca because they think, oh, I can't handle the altitude, you know. Or they, can't, or they think it's too cold, but they've only there one month, you yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, I know you have some feelings about that. Too, I certainly do. Um, look, some people, yeah, they, they do leave a little bit earlier and maybe mm -hmm. they should give it a little bit more time. But I also see the other, where people have stayed there for, let's say, a year mm -hmm. and it doesn't get any better. And so, yeah, obviously you need to do something about it. Right. As good as Cuenca may or may not be for you in terms of everything else, mm -hmm. if it affects your health, then yeah. you've got no option. You have to basically move somewhere else. That's true. But, you know... Don't just go there and say a week and say, oh, I can't handle it. You know? yeah, no, it's, yeah. it's going to take you, like the first three or four days, you will probably notice something. Yes. Even if it's just like light breathing whilst you're walking up a hill or something right. like that. But for some people, it just gets to the point where it's unbearable. Yeah. And, and I understand that. Yeah, yeah. We talk about healthcare, you know. I, I think that healthcare is equally as good in both locations. I think healthcare in Ecuador is uh, unsurpassed by anybody, in my opinion, you know. Uh, especially in terms of affordability, availability, and the fact that you can you have a more personal experience with your doctor here than you do in other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. Myself speaking about the United States, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a house costs sixty dollars here. I think you can get, uh, is probably the same in 
in Coinca? It's about or? the same, maybe a tiny bit cheaper. Yeah, like a, a normal bit. doctor's visit is 30 or $40. Yeah, Coinca. yeah. Here you can go to a doctor for 40 bucks, I believe. But if you want one to come to you, it's $60. Yeah. That's a, it's worth every penny, in my opinion. Cause in the United States, they don't even do house calls at all. It, it is, and the, the real value can come into it in the after-sales mm -hmm. service, so to speak. So yeah. like these guys, if you have a question about it, you don't need to go in for another appointment. Right. You get on WhatsApp, and they'll give you the answer. Talk to right them on WhatsApp. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We also mentioned about international airports. We talked about that. There, there's supposedly a lot of expansion plans for our airport here. You know, there is a local regional carrier that's supposed to be coming in here. We haven't, I mean, I've, since we've been talking here, I've heard an airplane go overhead twice. Mm -hmm. And so we have a lot of air traffic going on here that we didn't have this time last year. I think they're here, but we haven't heard much about it in the news. Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts about that as far as Quinka and uh, here? I think, you know? I'm going to be honest, I think they both are poor mm -hmm. in terms of the direct flights yeah. for internationals. And so... It's really hard to say one is better than the other because I think that they're, they're both kind of rubbish. At the mm -hmm. end of the day, Cuenca does have some routes to Guayaquil now, yeah. which is fantastic. There's like three a week, I think, with mm -hmm. Latham. Mm -hmm. And so that's definitely a step in the right direction. Yeah. But we're the same. Like in, in Cuenca, we hear these rumors all the time of a new international airport that's going to be built, but it's just all rumors and mm -hmm. no one has any real idea. So I'm not expecting it to happen anytime soon, which means I'm not really expecting the access to open up anytime soon. Right. It is a big deal for Cuenca in particular. Like if, if they did, when they did have um, a good international access and you had this, this route that you could go, so you'd have, my partner works for a Galapagos based tour company. Mm -hmm. And so they would often have an itinerary where you do a nice loop. And so you'd fly in to, to the islands in, you know, via Quito or Guayaquil, and then you do the alternate when you're coming on the way out. And so you could have a nice little section. Yeah. They stopped doing that. And that really hurt tourism numbers to Cuenca. Basically, there was no, it was not easy to come to Cuenca anymore, yeah. and so people kind of stopped coming. And so I would love to see that come back, not just for my own benefit, but just to open up some more opportunities right. for, for Cuenca as a whole. Yeah, there's supposed to be this Ecuadorian Airlines. The CEO wrote to me last year and told me that they were hoping to open up here mm -hmm. in June or July, but I don't not heard any news about it, so I don't know. See, I haven't heard anything true. official about the, the airports for a little while, which is mm -hmm. a shame. Yeah, yeah, it's a shame. Uh, we talk about the weather. Obviously, you know, I everybody knows that the weather is a lot different on the coast here than it is there. You hear people say oh, it's too cold. I don't like the cold. You know, um, you know, and, and they and talking about rain. They say it rains. Of course, I was there during the dry season. Mm -hmm. I was there in December, January, and but I've talked to people since then. It's supposed to be the rainy season there now, I believe, isn't it? There is a lot of rain. There is a lot of rain. Yeah. But it is opening up a little bit in terms mm -hmm. of you know, more, more sunny days. But it is probably one of the number one complaint <laughs> yeah. that a lot of people, they'll just complain yeah, the about rain. the weather yeah. all the time. Um, I don't think it's like Seattle. Some people do give that sort of slant to it. Yeah. I don't think it's that, that rainy. Yeah. Um, but it's got that sort of feel to it, and it just changes a lot too. Like yeah. One hour it might be completely sunny, then storming, and, and then clear up again. I saw that when I was there in, in January. It would be sunny and cloudy in the morning, sunny mid-morning to mid-afternoon, then yeah. thunderstorms roll in, and then it was over. You know? Yeah, but on, on the coast, I have noticed, I, I think a lot of people have the expectation yeah. that on the coast it's actually going to be sunnier than yeah. it actually and, may be. And it's know, not. Since, <laughs> since we've been here in Santa Marinita, I, I love the sunsets and I love mm -hmm. being here. But I think within the month, we've probably had like three or four really nice sunsets and, and days where the, the sun has properly shown itself. Yeah. So I don't know if, if that is what people can expect in general or time of the year, uh, but what would you say? I've talked like, to people that thought there's going to be sunny here all the time. Yeah. You know, like sunny Southern California. It's not that way. We have, you know, it's usually cloudy most mornings, you know, and the sun comes out in midday this time of the year often, you know. Uh, we saw lots of sun during the, the uh, alleged summer months here, you know, mm -hmm. but also the very humid, you know, and it's, it's warm. People say it's hot, I say it's warm, yeah. but I came from Arizona where it gets really hot, you know, so it's, it's very subjective. You know, I think it's super so, subjective. Like yeah. for me, I don't have a clear winner with the, with the mm -hmm. weather. 
Yeah. Like, even in my own family, I don't have a clear winner. My yeah. partner's from Quito, she loves the mountains. I'm from Australia, I'm from the beach. I love the beach. Yeah. And so what works for us is that we live in Cuenca, but then we spend like a month or two months every year at the beach, yeah. you know, around Manta or along the coast in general. Yeah, yeah. Food, we're talking about food. Mm -hmm. Food's different in both places. Food's good in both places, but it's definitely different. I personally, I like the variety of food that I found in Cuenca. Mm -hmm. Here is, you see a lot of seafood, lots of ceviche, yep. a lot of beer and wine, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Uh, I, I think that I, hands down, I think Cuenca is the winner when it comes to variety of food, quality of food, the, the different types of food, the, the, the number of restaurants that are open and open for business. And, and if it's important to you as well, the mm -hmm. expat friendly restaurants, yes. they tend to be a lot more in Cuenca than in yeah. Yes, I, I agree 100% on that. So. But what, what I will say is the, the coastal food is, is amazing. Like for yeah. me personally, if I'm comparing what is typical mm -hmm. in the area, the seafood on the coast is just brilliant. It's um, very good. Yeah. Really, really nice. All the ceviches and cebajados, all that stuff. Um, and Cuenca is more focused on pork and, and koi yeah. and stuff like that. And so my personal preference, I don't eat red meat. Mm -hmm. So it's an easy winner. Yeah. But my partner, Michelle, for example, she's like, oh, man, I can't decide. Yeah. I love them both. Yeah, that, you mentioned the koi. That's a lot of people don't know what koi is. And that's not spelled the way it sounds. It's spelled C-U-Y. Just that's it. That's it, C-U-Y. Yeah. I thought there was a no in there, but it's not. And that is guinea pig. See. So... Yep. And it's a, a, a delicacy here. Yeah. <laughs> it is. I've never tried it because I don't eat red meat, mm. but I know a lot of people that it's one of their must things when they, yeah. when they visit. I, I know this pretty much that I'm not going to try it. Uh -huh. yeah, why so not? I don't want it. But do you eat I've red heard meat? that it's a little bit, a uh, little greasy. I don't know if it's. I, I, I that, that's what I've heard as well. But yeah. Yeah, no and I'm not a real big pork eater. I don't no. really care. I think pork is too dry. What I don't know if that's even things? in the pork family, is it? I mean, I don't know. Uh, I, I, that's just what initially comes to my mind is that I don't think I would like it, but yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I might try it. I mean, I don't know, know where it comes from. But what about the other things? Like in the Sierra, it's very known for, let's say, the, the corn, mm -hmm. and like different types yeah. of corn, the potatoes. Like that type of food, is that something that you personally yes. enjoy, or yes. would you compare it to here? Can you get like Cuencano food here in Manta? Like typical Cuencana food, is it like... like what's a, a good example? Food? Like, uh, uh, like f I'll give you the other example. Like mm -hmm. in, in Cuenca, I'll find some like uh, food that's from Manabi, like Manabita and, and stuff, and yeah. it'll be very clear on the sign. That's what they're mm -hmm. selling. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm assuming I, it's not the same. I don't the think there's... Around. No, I think they're both really about the same, to tell yeah. you the truth. I yeah. don't think there's anything in particular from Cuenca or here that's different from the other. I... I think it's all good. I just think there's there's seafood is the big thing here. Yeah. There, a lot of people come here and when they when we start talking about restaurants, I always mention, you know, the good seafood places. You know, and of course any of the places down on the beach are all going to have yeah. ceviche and good seafood. But the restaurants on Restaurant Row, mm -hmm. there's a little place right behind this building here called De Roja. Yeah. Excellent seafood. You know. They have spaghetti with shrimp sauce, and it has shrimp in with it. That sounds very delicious. good. Yeah. There, there is certainly some good seafood in Cuenca. Yes, but obviously it's never going to be as fresh right. as you're going to get right. here. Right here, it's right out of the ocean, right to the plate. Yeah, you know, we do have trout in, in Cuenca, though. Yeah, see, we don't have trout here. I don't know where you can even. I don't think we. I might have seen it packaged here mm -hmm. at Mega Maxi. Yeah, 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 you would have. In the deli section down at the end, for those that live here and know where I'm talking about, I think I've seen trout down there, but I, I've never bought it. I don't really <laughs> like trout. I'm not a huge food. fan of it myself. Yeah, I, I much think, prefer the, the big coastal yeah, fish. I, I ate once when I was in the States, and I didn't care for it. I'd rather have catfish. <laughs> yeah. They don't sell catfish here. I don't know if there's catfish in this country. Wait, you being serious? You really like catfish? Yeah, I yeah. loved it. Yeah, I loved it. Brady catfish. Oh, to me, it's the best. So, <laughs> So we talk about events, mm -hmm. you know, that's, um, you gave the, the winner when we compare between Cuenca and Monte, you gave the winner to, to Cuenca. Uh, the, I know that your, your Yapa Tree it is a lot about events 
and mm -hmm. you have an events calendar. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so we have an mm -hmm. online events calendar mm -hmm. specifically for the Cuenca area. For so the Cuenca area. Yeah. Exactly. It's updated every week on a Wednesday and we send a newsletter on a Thursday with mm -hmm. that. And in order to do that, we spend some time like scouring the internet for right. all these different events. And we, with our um, Yapa Tree discount card, mm -hmm. we work with three or four of the really big event venues in okay. Cuenca. So it's really easy to find those events. And so we do compile those. And I was finding there's probably like 30 events every week um, okay. that we're sort of uploading. And so we're doing a lot of, of uploading of the events. We tried to do the same thing in Manta, mm -hmm. um, but it failed because, and we did it for about three months, but we just couldn't find the events here to upload yeah. onto the calendar. Mm -hmm. And like my, the end result for me was like, I don't know if it's purely because there's just not as many events in Manta, or there are some events here, but they're just not well advertised and yeah. it's all word of mouth or uh, I don't know. This is very much a fishing village here, fishing town. This is the, the fishing industry, you know, the tuna export capital of the world and there is a working city. It's not as much of a retirement community as Cuenca is or parts of Quito, you know, yeah. and even Waikil. And it's sometimes it's been said that it's hard to find things to do here. I tell people, you have to make up your own stuff to do here. You have to be creative, you know. You come here and you can go from here to other places for major events, you know. So, But I agree with you. I think that Cuenca is the, the winner. But when it comes to organized events, mm -hmm. uh, like Cuenca for me is the clear winner just based on volume that, that I've personally right. seen over the previous right, 12 months, right, basically. Right. Let's talk about safety, yeah. okay? Safety... I think that they're both pretty much equal, you know. Uh, as we all know, petty crime is a major, you know, issue here. Uh, begging is a major issue here that becomes a problem for some people. That can turn into petty crime because some beggars here were not happy with what you want to give them and they will come after you, you know. Uh, I had the incident that happened to me in Cuenca, but I was in the wrong place at the wrong time, in my opinion. I shouldn't have been there. Oh. And I actually saw, I could tell by looking ahead at this guy that I, I had, my gut feeling was that uh, I don't need to be here. I should have taken a turn, and but I didn't. I walked right into it and I basically got what I had coming to me. But uh, I mean, you know, I don't like this mentality of victim blaming, mm -hmm. but yeah, in hindsight, then it's very yeah. easy to say you should have left. Yeah. Them. Where do you think it's safer? Do you think it's safer in Cuenca or do you think it's Look, safer? petty crime is, it exists in, in, in Cuenca, it exists in Manta. Yeah. The, 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 the other side that really kind of concerns me a little bit more than the petty crime is just more the, the narco side of things. Yeah. And so they, I think you have to be a little bit naive to, to come to Manta yeah. and, and think that, okay, it's a massive to, port. Yeah. <laughs> Cuenca, uh, Ecuador is a huge drug trafficking nation, yes. very much recognized. Uh, a lot of the drugs are going through Manta, through Comes the port. Right through here. I mean, that's just the, the reality of it. And it's something that I feel like a lot of people don't like to talk about because it's you know, a negative slant to things. Yeah. And I'm certainly not advocating people get paranoid about it by mm. any means, but for me, it's big enough of a fear that it would probably stop me from moving my family here. Yeah. Not because I think my family is going to be involved directly in some right. sort of narco war, mm -hmm. but they probably will have friends or you know maybe extended family yeah. that is involved in that. And it's just not something that we want to expose the kids to. Sure. The sure. reality is we just don't have that in Cuenca as much. Right. Like, I think yeah. safety in general in Ecuador has probably gone downhill a little bit, a little bit. over the yeah. past 12 months like with COVID and, and the strike that we had. Um, but in terms of the, the petty things, I, I do think, or I, the way I see them is that they're kind of equal, but the, the, the more fearful stuff, the narco stuff, is yeah. certainly more concentrated yeah. along the coast. Not just yeah. Manta, but along the coast in yeah. general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know this, that we here in the mall, uh, 14, 15 months ago, we had a drug-related mm. assassination, yeah. and it's well-known news around here. A lot of talk around here was that that was the start of the gang wars here. It happens here. It happens in every major city in Ecuador. So that was I, shocking here. It the, was where, yeah. just where it happened in the mall, like right in, in the mall, right in, right across the hall from where I eat breakfast most mornings. It's a really nice mall too. Yeah, you just don't expect very that. nice. Yeah. yeah, the guy had just gotten out of prison. He was there with his family eating lunch, and two guys came in with pistols, and they just unloaded on him, and yeah, that wow. was it. You know, so yeah. it was very unfortunate. But you know, but 
That happens in the United States on an almost daily basis. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, but it's like, it's rare here, and we, you know, we don't like it. Uh, the mass are we shootings? still recording? Okay, we're still recording. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we are. Yeah, the, the mass shootings are yeah. certainly, they just don't exist here. No, 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 no. Yeah. The randomness of a mass shooting, you can take that out of the equation. Yeah, by completely, the yeah. Yeah, same thing with road rage. You don't see road rage here. And, and especially, it was as crazy as the driving is in this city. Uh -huh. You don't see road, you don't see people fighting on the side of the road over, no, you, don't. you cut me off, you know, or, you know, it just doesn't happen. So. I, I feel a little bit of road rage internally here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, housing, housing, we talked about housing, you know. You said if you want to love the ocean views, then Monte Condo is your winner. If you're looking for anything else, Cuenca would be your choice, and I agree with you on that. You know, housing is probably more affordable in Cuenca. I think know, so it, it is here. because you're paying for the views. But you're paying for here. the views like, here. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. There's certain parts in Cuenca where you are paying for luxury, and, yeah. and part of that is the views that it may have. But here, I feel like the accommodation is more centralized. Yes. In like one or two key areas, mm -hmm. focused on the high rise and a little bit more dense. Yeah. Whereas in, in Cuenca, you've probably got five or six key areas that expats do like to, to live in, yeah. and they're, they're kind of, they're, they're different areas, and yes. that's why we have that variety. So we have the Gringolandia area, mm -hmm. which is probably more, the closest to all the high rises yeah. and stuff that you yeah. see here, like very modern type buildings, mm -hmm. uh, but then you've got more traditional areas that are kind of scattered out uh, throughout the city, but then you do have some nice newer apartment complexes. Yes. all over the place. So it's a really good mix. And then you, you move 20 meters or 20 minutes, sorry, out towards mm -hmm. where we live in Chajarabamba and it's, it's a whole new ball game as well. You've got a lot more space. It's one or two degrees warmer. Yeah. And so it's really kind of choose your own adventure, if sure. you will. Sure, sure. Do you think there's more availability of housing in Cuenca than there is here? That I cannot mm -hmm. say. So mm -hmm. we, we are very active in the Cuenca property market. Mm -hmm. So we do rentals and sales in mm -hmm. Cuenca. Um, but one of the reasons I'm here in Manta is that we are expanding our offering yeah. to the Manta yeah. side of things. So at the moment, I don't have a good lens on yeah. the availability in Manta because we just haven't been operating for long enough. Right, right. Yeah. I have a good friend, Stella Coulter, she's in the rental business here. And another good friend, Ryan Kelly, he sells property, he sells a lot of high-end property. Yeah. And I ask her from time to time, you know, what is the inventory like? And it's just up and down. It's all over the place. You just never know. See, what I will say, more. one of the trends that I've noticed between Cuenca and Manta mm -hmm. is that there is a greater proportion of expats that live in Manta yes. that seem to own. Yes. And I think that's more because of the condo living style yes. and stuff like that. Yeah. Whereas people in Cuenca, they, they tend to, and maybe it's the altitude, mm -hmm. but they, they test the waters a little bit more. Yes. And so they'll generally rent for a longer period or, you know, just just rent first um, right. as opposed to buying first. And there's a lot of new housing on the horizon here. There's so much yeah. development going on right now. Uh, that was because of the earthquake in 2016 to destroy so much property here. Yeah. And I just did a video the other day driving around the streets of Monte and there's so much damage that you still see left over from the earthquakes that used to be rental properties and so forth. Yeah. And now, now it's, a lot of it's gone. But there is some major development going on as we're speaking yeah. right here. There's I think that's a, that is a big difference. Like yeah. Manta is going through this sort of hyper growth stage at yeah. the moment. So mm -hmm. that's kind of exciting, but also frustrating at the same time yeah. whilst they, they go through it. Whereas Cranker is more, it, it's been around for longer in, yeah. in that way. It's more, more I guess, developed. Mm -hmm. um, and so you don't have that same level of hyper growth, yeah. but I'd say it's still very steady, consistent growth. Mm -hmm. um, there's new urbanizations opening up. There's a mega maxi that's being built and yeah. sort of around that mega maxi, there's a, there's a bunch of new developments as well. So it's certainly not Cuenca is, is like stagnant or anything like that. I still think yeah. it's growth, but Manta is certainly growing yeah. at a much quicker speed. Yeah. Uh, we also talked about shopping. There is a huge difference between shopping here and shopping in Cuenca. You yeah. have, how many malls are in Cuenca? We have like, I'm gonna say three or four three main or four, malls. Yeah. Yeah. And, but we also have Probably like five or six like Mercados, yeah. like big Mercados big where you can get yeah. your fruits and vegetables and, and a whole bunch of other things. But the other big difference when it comes to shopping is the artisanal yeah. side of things. So yeah. like Cuenca is very much known as like a, a cultural capital of, of Latin America yeah. for the guys that are making stuff. Like so the ceramicists, the, the painters and yeah. all that. And so what that means is that you've got a lot of these goods that are produced by these artisans mm -hmm. that are available in Cuenca that obviously you, you can't find here. Yeah. Like the hats. 
uh, that, that, yeah. uh, the pen in my hat. So <laughs> yeah. That's a tough one because, yeah, yeah obviously Monte Cristi is, is kind of yeah. like yeah, uh, the right recognized here. birthplace yeah. and it's right here and lovely. Yeah. But a lot of those, like Cuenca has a massive hat industry as well. And so, like, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. So, a lot of the materials that they, they you know, from here, yeah. but there's, there's a lot of really good hat manufacturers or Panama hat manufacturers in, in Cuenca. In well. Cuenca. Oh, wow. Uh, there's also some really uh, notorious guitar makers. There's a name for a guitar maker. It's not called guitar maker. They're oh. called something else. Um, I'll think of it, and when I when I put this video together, I'll put it up above, and I'll put it like right up here. There's a name. There's a name for guys that make guitars, but there's supposed to be some really nice ones. No, there are. In, um, in, in about a month ago, just before we came here, we did the Ruta de las yeah. Guitaras, and that that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, that's out near Sig Sig. So this is probably about a, an hour, hour and a half out mm -hmm. of Cuenca itself. Yeah, um, but it's it's lovely and it's beautiful, very green, and there's guys that are still making guitars the same way they have yeah. for, for generations. Yeah, let me see how much time we have. We have plenty of time, I believe, because the last thing we want to talk Five about minutes. is a big subject: noise. Uh -huh. <laughs> My favorite topic. <laughs> you know, a lot of people know that I talk about noise a lot and everything. <laughs> when I was in Coinca in January. Uh, noise was not a problem for me. Mm -hmm. I've had people here that came from Cuenca and said, noise is a problem. I disagree. <laughs> I was there for a whole month. I did not have a problem with noise. You know, noise here is different mm -hmm. than it is here. Car alarms, horn honking. I joke about this being honkador. <laughs> Honkadorians, <laughs> they all honk at each other, you know. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And But I do it with respect. I mean, it's not... It's not a lack of respect, it's with respect and with love in my heart, okay? so, And then there's the dogs barking and the roosters crowing. All here in this big concrete jungle, we have all of this, yeah. all at once. <laughs> Building alarms going off, you know? What about Cuenca? What, t give me the straight scoop on noise in Cuenca. I, I think you're right in that it is a different noise. The, the mm. noise that generally concerns me the most here on the coast, it's more the party noise. Mm -hmm. So like the, party, the party yeah. is going all weekend and, and you just can't avoid them. If, yeah. if there's a party there, you're not, you're not gonna go knock on their door and tell them to be quiet. Yeah, yeah. You can try, it's just not yeah. gonna go very far. And so in Cuenca, around the festivals, yeah, like Cuencanos love to drink and party as mm. well, but um, around the festivals, you're gonna find that a lot. And so that noise, I think will be very similar. But the, the main noises in Cuenca, it's not so much the party, it's more just the day-to-day -day noises, yeah. like the, the garbage trucks, the, the gas trucks moving around, the, the kids that are going to school in the morning, the schools mm -hmm. themselves with their alarms, um, and even parks that yeah. you think that are perfectly quiet, but no, they have uh, like 5 or 6 a.m. in the morning, they have the organized dance troops yes. that come out blurring yeah. with their speakers. And yeah, everything. we have so, that right here. Okay, see. <laughs> yeah. So like, yeah, so I think we have the same general noise. Yeah. If I'm gonna compare them, I think they would be similar. But what Manta has on top of the, the general noise seems to be just this, this mass uh, exuberance of party noise, yes. which is great if you're at the party, not so great if you're living next door. Right. There are certain areas here that I, I'm not going to mention uh, just because I just don't think it's fair. But, I mean, I, I would tell people face-to-face, -face, you know, areas to avoid, you know, if, you, if you're noise-sensitive like I am, yeah. you know, um, that, I mean, from Friday night to Sunday morning, it's unbearable, in my opinion, yeah. you know. When I was in Cuenca, I'll give you a good example. Right down here in Flavio Reyes, you can walk down there, there's a car wash down there, and they have a sound system out front, and the music is really loud, mm -hmm. okay? But, I mean, it's just during the day. When I was in Cuenca, and I'd get off the bus, going down to Sunrise Cafe, I was walking down the sidewalk one day, and I, there was a speaker sitting there. I could hear music playing out of it, but it was not <laughs> blasting. They weren't trying to destroy you. Right, they weren't. Yeah, you know, it's like you can stand there and have a conversation with somebody, uh -huh. and it was not blasting. I've also heard, I just read in the Cuenca High Life recently that there is an ordinance in Cuenca, a noise ordinance, and they, they actually started it before the pandemic. The noise settled down during the pandemic, and now that things are changing, there's some of the noise is coming back, but people are starting to complain about it, and the city council mm -hmm. and the, the government officials are listening, and they're going to start enforcing it. Mm -hmm. We don't have that here. We don't have anything like that here, you know. But uh, to me, I tell people here, 
You have to learn to deal with it. Yeah. You have to learn how to deal with it. And there are ways to deal with it, you know. Uh, it's not all lost, you know, just because somebody's having a party. You know? No, I completely agree. Earplugs yeah. work great. See, see, they, yeah. they really do. You, know? you just need to come here with, you know, your eyes open. Yes. And, and realize that it's going to be a little bit different and you're going to have to make some adjustments. Yeah. But some people aren't willing to do that in Cuenca either. And so it doesn't matter mm -hmm. if it's going to be this party noise or just the general day-to-day -day noise. Yeah. You hear a lot of complaints yeah. about noise in Cuenca too. Yeah. So, Jason, this, this is a one-word answer, mm -hmm. okay? Cuenca or Monta? I live in Cuenca. Easy. There you have it. Yeah. Cuenca. But that's not to say I'm a Cuenca fanboy or something mm -hmm. like that. Like, right. For me, what I love about this particular topic is that the cities themselves are so incredibly different. Yes, like and they both have there. something to offer. Absolutely. Everybody. We, we yeah. live in Cuenca because we like it and it suits our family better. Mm -hmm. Well, we actually don't. We live in Chajrabamba, which is yeah. like 15, 20 minutes away, and it's just a tiny bit warmer and a little bit more green space for mm -hmm. us. Um, but we choose to holiday here at the coast, yeah. and we have done so for the last four years because we love Manta. Yeah. We love the yeah. area, but yeah. we just for us, it's not a day-to-day -day place. It's a place that we want to enjoy for a month or two at a time. Sure, sure. So if I can get a little personal, yeah. not too much, no. but you're from Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you haven't called me mate yet. <laughs> I mean, so what's up with that? I mean, you know, it's like I have a friend that's in the Pakochi Forest. He's from yeah. Australia, and every other word is mate. So... You know, is, is, that, that, is that Jeff or who's that? Yeah, Jeff. Uh, Jeff we've been yeah. hanging out with Jeff a little bit lately Have too. Yeah, 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 <laughs> <he's> <laughs> uh, this, this 360 degree GoPro belongs to him. Uh -huh. You know, oh, super. He brought it to me to let me play with it, but I can't get it open to change the battery out in it. But he, every other word, mate. See, yeah, okay, see, mate. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> see you, mate. You know. If, but, if I'm in <laughs> Australia, you're going to hear that, and yeah. you're not going to be able to understand yeah. me. How but did you here, end up coming here? What, what brought you to Ecuador? Uh, here, uh, the, the short answer is kite surfing at Santa yeah. Marinita. Kite surfing, yeah. yeah. So I was living in Colombia at the time, here, yeah. um, but I wanted to do a bit of kite surfing in somewhere different, yeah. and it was kind of my naivety in a mm -hmm. way. that uh, I came here, I didn't do any research, mm -hmm. which meant that when my gear got shipped over from Australia, it got stuck in customs. And, it got stu and I had a battle. Oh, I had a big, big battle, and it was going to cost me a lot of money. Eventually, I had to stay here, not for the one week that I was coming here for, but for like three months, yeah. just doing this battle, and I didn't end up getting my gear, but throughout that three months, I got to learn about Ecuador, and yeah. spent more time on the coast, more time in Quito, met my partner, yep. and the rest is kind of history. Yeah. But for me, the reason why I've stayed in Ecuador is that, at least compared to Colombia, it is certainly safer. Yeah, um, that, that security aspect was, I felt that in, 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 in my bones, in mm -hmm. my guts, that when yeah. I was living here, not constantly doing this, looking over my shoulder all yeah, the time. Sure. Um, and the other thing that I really liked uh, just about Ecuador is that it's a small country, but there's so much variety within this country. So we're talking about the differences between Manta and Cuenca, and that's mm -hmm. like a big thing. So sure. Yeah, yeah, sure, you have to drive for a little while, um, like seven or eight hours or something like that to, to get from Cuenca to Manta, but mm -hmm. it really is like a different world. Yeah, is. Completely yeah. different micro-ecosystems going on, different animals, different food, different cultures. Yeah, mm -hmm. they speak Spanish, but it's different type of Spanish. Yes. I don't understand Very half much of what different. people yeah. say here in Manta. Yeah, yeah. You're so young. You're, you're, are you, did you retire no, in Ecuador? No, I'm not retired. You're not retired. I, I okay. work. <laughs> and people ask me this all the time. They're like, they see me hanging out at a cafe or something. But I've been a you're remote working. worker for years. Yeah. So I've done the digital nomad thing, working in different countries, working remotely, okay. working for agencies in Australia, in, in, in America. Yeah. Uh, but right now, I'm really focused on our own projects yeah. And, yeah. and growing our projects within the Ecuadorian economy. And it's, sure. it's a lot harder to make money in Ecuador yeah. than to make money yeah. outside yeah, of Ecuador absolutely. and bring it in. We have a mutual friend. That's a YouTuber. Uh, we do. Kafter Joseph. Uh -huh. Kafter Love the guy. Joseph. Yeah. He, uh, he told you about me. He was, I met him when I was in Cuenca. Yeah. I wish he was here. I wish he would just come here and stay for a while. But uh, he, he doesn't really like the beach so much. He doesn't. No. No, he <laughs> loves it up there. Uh -huh. you know. All right. Anything else we need to cover? No, I don't think so. Uh, we've yeah. covered most of the differences. You want to uh, say hi to Mom? Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. <laughs> 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 okay, we'll cut it off there. It's been a pleasure. Awesome, it's been, Thanks for you know, me. Uh, I remember I saw some of your uh, Captain Joseph interview you uh, on the river walk there yeah. in Cuenca, and I said, "Yeah, 
we got to meet this guy someday, you know? <laughs> so no, here I'm, you are. I'm a big so. fan, so I'm glad yeah. to, to be on. And good, good. Thank you. Okay, we'll cut it off there.